Good day again. It's just yesterday that I last spoke to you. Today I thought I'd do a quick flashback Friday on some old cameras. Cameras in the Agfa brand and uh, they're really interesting cameras. I've got four I'm going to show you today. One of them, um, it's not called an Agfa but it basically is an Agfa. That's the 35mm. But these um, four cameras are all folding cameras and three of them take 120 film so in effect they are medium format cameras and uh, they take the square like a Hasselblad they take a square photo and you get about uh, I think about 12 shots to the roll on on uh, these cameras anyway the first one I'm going to show you is an early version of this particular camera <coughs> and pe people are calling these um, uh, they, they regard these in the Lomography range these days. They're not so um, brilliant results, but people like that old look. So this one is called the um, Agfa Isola 1. There you go, Agfa Isola 1. And uh, the other two that I've got are similar in looking to this, but they have a bellows, whereas this one doesn't have a bellows. You just twist this front part here, and the, the lens part pulls out like that so there you go this one you look through the viewfinder there you wind the film on there you've got a little window in the back like with 120 film where you can see what number you're up to it's very basic that's your shutter there you wind it on before you can take another shot I think okay and um, you've got very little control You've got uh, on the front here, you've got a um, some settings for zone focusing, basically. You've got a, a um, 5 to 8 feet range, an 8 feet to 17 feet range, and a 17 feet to infinity. You can see them just uh, there on the front there. You can see those different ranges there. And basically, to focus the camera, you just estimate the distance that you're looking at. There's no split image viewfinder through this, a rangefinder, it's not a rangefinder camera. So use that zone focusing method there. <coughs> you don't have much um, <coughs> in the way of uh, <coughs> sorry, control over your aperture. Up here you can see, uh, you can see that there, there's uh, this little knob here. And that gives you three separate settings. One of them's sort of overcast and one of them's sunny and one of them's, I'm not sure the other one is. <laughs> but anyway, if you have a look inside that viewfinder there, as I change this, you might be able to see the, see the aperture changing there. Do it there. Three settings. Okay. Anyway, and there's a B and an M setting. I'm not sure what that is. That's probably to do with the flash. There's a terminal here. I'm not sure what that terminal's for. I haven't really used this camera. I got it given to me, I think, a while ago. But it's a very basic. You um, open it up here. There's the back. You put your uh, 120, 120 film in there. And you wind it onto that. And you just keep going. You, you, you wind it on until you get the number one in, the, in this little window here that you can see there. Until you get number one in there. And then you... Um, Take, you've got to wind it on and take the next shot. If you don't wind it on, you'll have a double exposure. So that's the first one. That's the Agfa Isola 1, a very basic little camera. <coughs> the next one, which is a bit more refined than that, which I... Um, this was the next one I got. I'm not sure how I came by these, whether I paid for them or, or bought them or not. But this one is called the Agfa Isolette 1. These cameras, if you're lucky, you can count, they come with a nice case like that. And uh, got Agfa on the front there. So this is an Agfa Ice Isolette One. And I'm just going to take the the bottom off if I can. Okay, unscrew that. That also serves as a tripod mount down there. So we take this off. I've got to film in this one, I think. In fact, I've got to film in both these next two cameras. Okay, that should come off. So there you go. That's what it looks like without opening it up. To open it, there's a button up here. You just press that button and out it pops. Look at that. And there you've got the bellows, whereas before we just had a, a tube without the bellows on the other one. This one is pretty basic. And once again, though, you have to um, 
use some zone focusing but it does have on the front here it does have a scale on the front if you look at this scale just there it gives you the range of whatever aperture you've got what what the focus distance range is so for instance on this one if I'm setting this at say 10 feet I'm going to set the focus the focus is on the front here with it your focus with this ring on the front here and um, if I set the focus on here to 10 feet you might be able to see that that's set up the top there to 10 feet and then if I look on here on this um, depth of field scale which is either side just in that ring just below that knurled wheel there you've got um, if you look down on it and you're using your camera like this normally and you look down on it like that and um, if I'm set at 10 feet and say I'm on I set the camera at say f8 yeah I'm going to set that on f8 now this little knob up here this little knob up here is how you set your apertures you just slide that back and forth to set your apertures up there and I set that on f8 whoops and if I look at this depth of field scale, which all the old cameras used to have these, so you could because you didn't have rangefinder focusing. If I look at this, it tells me that um, at f8, wait a minute, I'll go around this way now. At f8, um, and I've got the focus set on 10 feet. Everything between about um, seven foot and about 15 foot is in focus. Um, so you can. And also you can set this on, on the other end here. If I set this camera to, say, infinity at f8, well, then everything from about uh, 13 feet, looking at the scale up here, everything about from about 13 feet to infinity will be in focus. So quite handy for, for taking shots. And you can get reasonably accurate with your focus on these cameras. So there you go. It's got a... Uh, a um, flash sync um, uh, nozzle here to, to plug your flash into I think that's what it is and I'm not sure whether this has got um, it's a Vario shutter it's an Ag Agfa Agnar 1 oh, sorry f4.5 85 millimeter lens and it's a Vario shutter is what it's called down here so there you go and I've used this camera and they take quite good photos I might be able to find some link up to show you some on that. You look in this little back window there and it says, it says I'm ready to take the next shot, which will be number seven. So I've already taken six shots on this camera. And um, to wind it on, just use this knob here like the other one. Fold it back, just close it up like that. And there you are. That's the Agfa Isolet 1. This one here is very similar. This is the Agfa Isolet 2. And that pops out the same way. It's got much the same controls. I don't know, except that it's got a Prontor SVS lens on this. And uh, the aperture is f4.5. And it's also an 85mm lens. So, and this t also takes the 120 film square shots you'll get. Colour and um, black and white you can use in these. The, the modern day films can go in these. So basically these are sort of a poor man's medium format camera. Forget your Hasselblads and your Mamiya's and Pentax 645 and all that. This is a little pocket camera you can take anywhere with you which will give you medium format photos. Particularly in shots of landscapes and things like that, it's quite useful. So there you go. Um, not sure what that scale is. That's not on the other one. Let's have a look. No, this scale up here, that looks like it's some sort of a yeah, I'm not sure I have to look at that and see what that does. That's got um, some f-stops, no, sorry, distance settings on it from infinity through to about 1.2 feet or one foot. And then you've got some um, apertures on there. So maybe that's another way of uh, working out what you're doing with the camera. There's a little lever up here. And I'm not sure what that does. I'll have to do a bit more research on this. Maybe you can too, because see, this one here, see there's a little lever there with a red dot on it. So I have to do some research and find out what that one does. 
this one here doesn't have that lever on there so you can see the difference between you know they both look very similar from the back but that one doesn't have the little red lever thing and that one does so there you go so this one here I've also got a film in that one too. I'm also up to about number seven on that one. So there you go. The, the, they take 120 film, those three cameras. And now just to make things even more interesting, this little one here is called the Ansco Super Regent. It looks very similar. It's smaller though, compared in size. Similar design, but a smaller camera. If I come back there, it is slightly smaller and yeah, they're both reasonably heavy. They're nice metal construction, these cameras. But this one here is a 35mm. And uh, to open this one, there's a little lever on the back. You just pop that out there like that. And then you've got something looking very similar to what you had before. But no, you've got a range finder here. So you can, you've got a little split image in the middle where you can bring the two bits together to get your focus correct. Um, and also you've got uh, your depth of field scale as well on the front or oh, no you haven't no you haven't got that because you're using the split image focusing so let's have a look this lens is an it's actually it's an Agfa camera but it's been re-badged by the Ansco name the original uh, Agfa version of this which is exactly the same camera I believe is called the Agfa I'm reading this off my screen it's called the Agfa Super Solonet and the first model of this was made in 1954 apparently um, and th but then this one here was a rebadged one called the Anscon uh, Anscon Super Regent whereas the other one was the Agfa Super Solonet but they're both the same camera uh, pretty much and um, it's a beautiful precision camera and uh, just have a look at that it's just so well made this one's pretty much in mint condition really and uh, takes 35 millimeter film don't know whether I've got a film in it. I think I might have. Yeah, yeah, I've got a film in that one at the moment, so I won't open that up and show you. But it's very similar controls to what the other one's got and operates in many ways. Once again, with the bellows coming out, although you can't really see much of the bellows in there, you probably can there. And uh, a beautiful little camera. So there you go. There's four cameras you might not have ever thought about. These. Um, are not all that expensive on the second hand market maybe the 35 millimeter might be a little bit more expensive than the, the 120 millimeter ones i'm not sure so that's those four cameras just to throw in one last thing i've shown this camera before on my youtube videos this is the camera that i it's not a, an agfa it's a kodak it's the camera that i learnt photography on which used to be my dad's back a long time ago and it is actually also got a little bellows in it and this one is the, uh, I've got to remember how to get the bellows out now, you've got to press this little, this is the uh, Kodak, what is it, it's Kodak Retina, basically a Kodak, really a long line of photo cameras in the Kodak Retina. So this is the Kodak Retina, you've got to press this button down the bottom here, and that opens up once again, you've got the bellows there, and very similar in many ways to how you operate those other, t other cameras that I've just been showing you. And on the bottom here, it's got a depth of field scale too, because you've got no rangefinder in this. You've got to uh, get, guess your uh, distance to get your focus and use the zone focusing system. But that takes 35 mil film. So this one here takes 35 mil film with a rangefinder. This one takes 35 mil, mil film, similar sort of camera, but with no rangefinder. So you've got to do some zone focusing. So I hope you find that interesting. I'll try and put some um, links to these cameras on um, just open this one up again so you can see what it looks like I'll try and put some links to these cameras that was the that one's the 35 mil one that is so there you go I'll try and put some links to things about these cameras on my YouTube video so once again thanks for watching I hope you found that interesting uh, here again on what we'll call flashback Friday once again so uh, have a good weekend see you later